of our praise. No man on earth should give glory to his hand. All the glory must be to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to your name in the highest. Glory be to your name in the highest. Have your way today and take control, Father. Speak through me, Father, today to bless your children, Father. Yes, Lord. Those that are here, those that are online, and those that will hear the message afterwards, Father, let them hear the word to life for transformation in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Lord. Amen. After today's meeting, let everyone's life, especially the young one, be transformed in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So this is not a, a normal or a usual or regular, let me say a regular uh, meeting that I'm, I'm giving long time. I'm not giving too much time, but I want to manage the little time uh, our young people have given me uh, wisely. So I may not be having time to read all the Bible passages that I have here, because if I want to take all these ones, I'll be going a, a, more than an hour, and I'm not giving more than 30 minutes. So I want you to, to please uh, bear with me. And m- most important thing is the Lord to minister to you in this short time. Through what I want. It's a large message, but I, I ask the Holy Spirit to help me to compress it to a small that will bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, they said they didn't give me time. So I can go till 4 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> You have to give me time. Otherwise, if you say you don't give me time, two, I... two three. All right. Sorry. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Hallelujah. We are going to read from the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 25. Genesis 25. Genesis 25. Genesis 25. Can we read from verse. Uh, 20 to 28, please. Genesis 25, 20 to 28. Read okay, right from by 24, 4 to save time. Okay. So when her days were filled for her, for her to give birth, mm. indeed there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red. He was like a hairy garment all over. So they called his name Esau. Afterwards, his brother came out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. heel. So his name was called Jacob. Isaac was sixty was sixty years old when she bore them. So the boys grew, and Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. But Jacob was a mild man, dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we saw two people born into a family as twins. There were twin children born into two boys born into a family of Isaac and Rebecca, and the two of them were born the, uh, the same day but different times. The same day and different. That was the reason why there was a header and the junior one chosen because the first one that even though the uh, twins are born the same day, the first one, the one that came first, becomes the elder according to time because first one can come out. And the second one come out few minutes different. I mean, few minutes after the the first one. So we assume that the first one is the the el- elder of the second. Amen. Amen. So here, the two children were born, and they began to they began to grow. They began. Something happened that I want us to see quickly from thirty four. Can you read from the next verse twenty nine, twenty nine to thirty four? Now Jacob cooked a stew. And Esau came in from the field, and he was weary. Mm -hmm. And Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with that same red stew, for I am weary. Therefore his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, Sell me your birthright as as of this day. And Esau said, Look, I am about to die. So what is this birthright to me? Then Jacob said, Swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lent, uh, lentils. Then he ate and drank, arose, and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to underline verse 31, if that's your Bible. If it's your Bible. 31 says, But Jacob said, Sell me your birthright. 
as of this day. And sorry, on the line 32, I mean, 32, not 31. On the line 32, verse 32 says, And Esau said, Look, I am about to die. So what is this bad right to me anyway? What is this bad right to me? In other words, anyway. Anyway is my own, my own addition to what he's saying. I am about to die. So what is this bad right to me anyway? Now, someone was asking for the bad right. The owner of the bad right said, What is so important about this bad right? Give me food. Give me what I need. I am hungry. I have a need desperately. Give it to me and let me eat. What is so important to you, Jacob, about this bad right, bad right, bad right? What is so important to you about it? So, by the help of the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus, you are going to be hearing this short message that is called the bad right. Say it to somebody next to you. The bad right. 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 Everything the Lord created in the world, it, they are very good. He created them with plans. God does not make mistakes. He created all things with plans and perfectly. He created animals and everything in the water to serve different purposes. And he created all for their purpose. Like I always say in my teachings, whatever God has commanded us to do is according to purpose. Not because of tradition or custom. Or because it has to be a doctrine. But for a purpose. And the creation of animals also for a purpose. The creation of human beings also, they are for a purpose. And the reason why God created human beings, I mean, that is the reason why God created human beings. And he also equipped them to fulfill the purpose of their creation. Because they were created for a purpose. Now, because God created man and woman, mankind, or what you feel like call it humanity, or you call it mankind. So whenever you see me here saying mankind, as, as uh, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the message, you know I'm talking about man and woman that he created in his image. So he created them for, a, for various purposes. And because they were created for a purpose, for a reason, they did not just manifest for nothing to just fill the earth, occupy it, and just die one day and go away. So therefore, he gave them what it takes to fulfill that purpose he created for. He created them for. Amen. Amen. So also is everyone under my voice, or you are looking at me, you were also created by God to serve a purpose. You were made into the world in this likeness to serve what? A purpose or not. And from the day you were born, you were being equipped with all the, all the things you need to serve that purpose. Right from God is the Lord that knows the end from the beginning. Because he is the one that knows the beginning of man and also knows their end. So from the day you were given back to, the Lord knew the reason why he sent you to this world. And therefore, he has also given you all the things you need to actually acquire and uh, uh, fulfill that purpose. To fulfill that purpose. God has not created anybody to suffer in this world. God has not created anybody to die young in this world. This could be another message of another day. Somebody, one of my children was asking me recently, let's say, uh, if, a, if a young, a, a 25 year old die. Some people will say, God has given, God has taken. And I said, no. I replied, I said, God does not take a young child. God never takes any young child. But there are mystery behind when young people are dying. There are mysteries beyond your imagination, beyond my imagination, except those that God has revealed. You see, because there are many things that God reveals to those who diligently seek Him. He will tell you the reason why things happen. And people begin to claim to say, God has given, God has taken, Bless, glory be to the name of the Lord. If you, re if you read the, the, the book of that Job very well, you understand what that means. Anyway, to move forward quickly, God brought Isaac and Jacob into this home. They were also being equipped with whatever they needed. To be what? To fulfill the purpose on earth. Isaac was given by God. He, he possessed what he needed to fulfill purpose. Jacob also had what he needed in him to fulfill purpose. Everyone under my voice are carriers of instrument of purpose. Say that. 
carrier. Send somebody next to you. You are a carrier of, of instrument of purpose. You are, you are a carrier of instrument of purpose. Every young lady that is born, every young baby that is born, uh, I mean girl child, when you begin to grow, the Lord has deposited an instrument to carry out purpose on earth into you. Even without your knowledge. Whether you are a child of God or not. Whether you are born in a Christian home or not. Whether your, past, your fa- parents are pastors or not. Whether your parents are witches or wizards. Once you are born into this world, the Lord created you and he brought you to this world. And therefore equipped inside you the instrument to fulfill purpose. Instrument to do what? To fulfill purpose. As a girl child, the Lord has kept something in you to fulfill purpose and also bless the man that will marry you in the future. You carry those purpose inside of you. And as soon as you see yourself in that marriage, if it is right, then the purpose begins to manifest. If it is wrong, then the purpose becomes the cause. So that's the reason why the Lord laid on my heart strongly today to tell our young people about bad rights. Say it again. Bad rights. So the bad rights are the equipment or instrument that God has deposited in you to do what? To fulfill purpose. The things that he has created you with when you came to this world that you never knew. The things he created you with inside of you that you never knew and never had the idea what they were. Those are the ones that we call bad rights. So Jacob knew what he wanted. Esau that had the right, they don't know what he wanted, what he want. So what happened? The person, somebody wanted to take, to assume the rights, and somebody that had it was careless about it. He did not take it to be anything. What is so bad right? But why, Jacob, why are you so interested in bad right? You just want to be head. You just, what, is, what is there in the bad right? Okay, I'll give it to you. You take it. At that time, he was giving it. He thought it was a joke. It did not mean anything to him. Although there was a prophecy that the, 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 the elder will serve the younger. That the elder will serve the younger. Then I will, I will, talk, to you, I will talk to you about the prophecy when I'm beginning to, when I, when I want to round up. Because a prophecy is bad about you does not mean that it has to come to pass. Because a prophet of God, from God, has seen a prophecy. Say this is what will happen to you does not mean that it will happen if you if you don't if you don't want it. You see, the greatest prophet in the, in the land gave a prophecy to King Ezekiah, but it did not come to pass. And the Bible recorded that all, among all the prophecy of of, of of prophet Isaiah, that was the only thing that did not the only one that did not come to pass, because Ezekiah rejected. He said, "This will not happen." I refuse and I reject this. And the Bible said before I, 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 Isaiah left the court of the palace, the Lord, the word of God came back to him. He said, go back and tell Ezekiah that the plan has changed. Hallelujah. Amen. The bat right. The bat right. Now, I want to go quickly to tell you, because I have a lot here, and I need to summarize quickly to fit into my time. Amen. Amen. I know they gave me liberty, but I don't want to misuse my liberty. I want to stay within the time. They will not be looking at me and come and collect their microphone. Amen. Amen. Number one way that people lose birthright. Number one way of losing your birthright. I've explained to you what the birthright is, isn't it? Yeah. Now, number one way that young people lose their birthright. Before I begin to number this one by one, I need to tell you what has happened to the adults. Because we are all, as I'm talking to you, I was also a child at some point. I became a teenager at some point. I did not descend from heaven the way I am. Then I became who I am now. What, why am I saying this to you? A lot of your parents, brothers, sisters, those that are older than you. Many people are fighting some battles of life now that they did not know how they came to their lives. A lot of people are graduated from universities and they are looking for a job for seven years. They can't get a job. Some people are married. They can't get a child. They are praying for a child to come. Some people have a job. They cannot account for the money they get from the job. They, they, can't, they, just, they make a lot of money. They can't just see anything coming together. It looks like they are not working. Yet they are working. Some marriages are not working. Husband and wife fighting in the homes all the time. 
We have seen marriages where husbands kill wife or wife kill husbands. You see? We saw where people die young. We see a situation where some, some young, young female or some young women die in childbearing. And many more situations. Many more things. A lot of people are defeated in the world. Some people live in this world as if God has withheld every good thing from them. They work hard. They look for sources. They want to eat. It's difficult to put three square meals on the table. And some people, some young men, later on got married, they are never honest or faithful to their their wives or husbands. It's not because God created that originally. Some people grow up to become homosexual. Some grow up to become gay. Some grow up to become lesbian. It's not because God had this this plan. God never had a plan that anybody become turned out to be those ways. But when bad right is lost, when bad right is missing, everything begins to happen to anybody. When you lose your bad right, you begin to make several errors and several mistakes. Because the bad right is the ability to think right. The bad right is ability to hold the bull, bull, the bull of life by the horns. The bad right is your strength. The bad right is your power. As a young, as a young person. The bad right is ability for focus, to be focused. Your bad right is ability to be successful. God deposited all that in you when you were born. The bad right is to look to find Christ early at the stage of your life. That's your bad right. Because it's God that sent you. And he wanted you, he created you so that you can, you can discover him at the very... Uh, uh, young stage of your life but when the right is not understood when the bad right is not taken seriously then many things begin to happen and I want to go quickly into into this these are the ways you can be dislodged of your bad right these are the ways you wake up one day you say where is my bad right Why, why have I become suddenly like this I just don't have strength to just do anything anymore. I'm just so weak. I'm so tired. I don't even have any driving force inside of me anymore. That is the best right. God did not create any, any, any children to become failures or to fail exams or to do exams many times. But when you are dislodged of your bad right, anything begins to happen to you. Until you go back to the person that the owner of the of the right that gave it to you, that is the one that will go to wherever you have put it and collect it for you and bring it back to you. I pray today, if you are one that have lost your birth right, the Lord will go wherever you have put them, wherever they have stolen them, whether whoever you have borrowed them to, He will collect them and put it in your custody from today. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Number one, you can sell your birth right. You can do what? You can sell sell it when you don't know. You can sell your bad right. But there are some activities that happen in a man's life, in a child's life daily. They don't even know what they are doing. They just, just, young children just do whatever they want to do. They don't even understand what they are doing. So, look at Esau. Esau said, what is this bad right anyway? Give me food. Let me chop. Have it. I give it to you. You see, you don't know the day you lose your bad right. But the day you need it, that's when you know that you have lost something. I repeat that. When you are losing or borrowing out, or you are being robbed of your bad right, you don't discover, you don't know. But the day or the time you need it, then you begin to, you begin to look, it, look around for it with prayers. There are, as I'm talking to you, there are many adults jumping from one prayer, he mounted to the other, looking for their bad right. There are many pastors jumping from one, one mountain to the other looking for the bad right they have lost when they were young. See, as pastors, as ministers of God, there are bad right. God knew that he was sending you to the world to become a, a minister at some point in your life. He knew that. So he gave you anointing. Anointing is not, is not given to you the same day you, begin, you become a minister. Unlike people think. It's given to you from heaven. The anointing did not come upon Jesus the day he got baptized with John the Baptist. He came with him from heaven. The anointing was not given to Samson when he grew up. He was born with it, isn't it? 
He was born in the and John the Baptist was not anointed by preaching around on the street. He came to the world with the anointing. Everybody come to the world with the anointing and power. But when you lose in the course of growing up, when you don't know Jesus, when you have not met him, and you don't want to meet him, you reject him voluntarily. Some young people say, I don't want, I'm not ready. If you are the young person, I will come to that stage. If you are a young person, you say, I'm not ready, I don't want. You are doing yourself damage. What did I say? You are doing yourself damage. Because you are losing bad right monthly, yearly. And as you continue to grow, you begin to lose more. Until you, you get to a place, when you now settle down in life, you now begin to struggle. Where's my bad right? Where's my bad right? Oh, they took my bad right. You will see how some how Esau was crying for his own later. The bad right, he said, What is it that what is it after all? I give you. Then it became very important to him when he grew up. Where's my bad right? Oh, my brother has taken my bad right. Oh, the first thing he did, he took one. Now he has taken another. I will kill him. This is the bad right, he said. What is it after all? Take it. Then he grew up, the bad right became important. Because he gave the bad right to Jacob, then he was making several other mistakes. When you lose your bad right, every evil prophecy will begin to come to pass. When you lose your bad right, you open the door for negative prophecy to come to pass in your life. They just begin to happen. And the one, number one, like I said, you can sell it. You sell it. There is a, a kind of transaction you do, you don't even know you are doing the transaction. You are selling it. Number two, you can lose your bad right. You can do what? You can lose it carelessly. You don't mean to sell it. Nobody has offered you anything. But you just lose it because you are careless. You don't, you don't realize what you have. Somebody that, that wanted it just do what? They take it diabolically. There are a lot of people, a lot of you, especially in Europe and Africa, I mean, sorry, in Europe and America, some people don't actually know that there are, there are powers in the, the Bible, in the book of Revelation, the Bible talks about it. This, uh, there's a marketplace in the world. Market, where the queen of the coast is there, is, is, is there and transacting business with the people, the powerful people in this world, selling the glory of man and looking for the blood of the saint. Now, you will not be able to handle that. I don't want to, I don't want to bring young children into this, into this area now. Or to become a little bit more mature in Christ. So, bad rights are also hijacked or stolen spiritually from, from those that God has given unto. That is, some people call it, some people discover their own, they call it talent. Some of the bad rights, some, some of us call it talent. You see, a child just was born, then he began to do things that nobody showed him how to do it. He just began to do them, clamping on the walls. And the people say, oh, this, this, this boy may be this. See, some child just began to take the ball and begin to walk without going anywhere, without learning anywhere, and they said, this one will be a good footballer. That is, those are the bad right? Those are the things God created with you with. You don't learn them from anywhere. They are inbuilt they are in with, with you. So, number two, you can, you can lose it. Number, number three, you can also what? You can, you can be robbed of it. You can do what? You can be robbed of your, of your bad right. And number four, you can loan it out. You can loan it as a loan. And after you, are, after you have loaned it out, the person you gave it to might say, I don't want to give you again. Then you begin to pursue to get it back. Now, I will, I will show you a few, as, as much as I have time to. I will, I'm cutting everything short, 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 short. We will not be able to read all these passages of the Bible. But number one, I said to you, that those who lose their own carelessly, they are the ones that refuse to be born again. I, I've told you already how you can lose them, but this time I begin to break it down. See, the category of the people that lose their own, they are those, careful, I mean carelessly, they are those that refuse to be born again. They don't even know what they have. They don't even want to recognize that. So they lose it carelessly because they, they do what? They don't even know what they, are, what, they are, what they are doing. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 1 to, 6, 1 to 7. Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 1 to 7. Yes? Remember now your creator in the days of your youth. Let, let's, let's take 1 to 3. And you can read the rest yourself later. 
one to three years. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Before the difficult days come. Before difficult days come. And the years draw near. And the years draw near. When you say, when I you have s- no pleasure in them. When you now begin to talk negative to God, say, why is God allowing this to happen to me? I don't think God loves me. I don't think I'm part of his uh, people he created. I think God has forgotten about me. I think God is not even looking my direction. Uh, God is not good to me. Before you begin to say that, you must do what? You must realize that your birth rights can be protected and defended before birth rights remain in you until you get to some certain age. They don't begin to show up. They show up as according to how God programmed it in, your, in His timing concerning your age. So some will manifest as you get to become a teenager. From the ages of 13 to 17, you begin to see some of them manifesting. Some begin to come up from the age of young adult, from 18 to 20, 21, 22. And some of them wait until you get married because before they begin to show up. And they are all inbuilt, created by God inside of you. Amen. Amen. So a lot of people, when they refuse to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, is you are as good as someone that has exposed his life to anything to take. Say, I'm, I'm, I'm here for grab. You walk on the street daily that I am here for grab. My talents are for grab. My, my bad rights are open. What is it anyway? You begin to speak like what? Like Esau. What is it anyway? What is the meaning of it? I don't even understand what it is. You see, you will not understand what bad right is until you get to maturity when you begin to settle down. That's when you see what you have lost as you are growing up. I will speak more about that as I move forward. Number two, I have told you that it can be it can be lost carelessly because you are not born again on time. Because when you are born again, the Lord will send His angel to be what to be in charge of you and of your birthright. He will keep you safe in the secret place under His shadow, so that you will not lose any of them, so that you will not be hijacked, so that it will not be robbed from you. You will not lose them because by living in obedience after salvation. The Lord will be protecting those bad rights. The inbuilt one. He will make sure he guides you through them. And by obeying him, he will protect you. He defends defend you. Even the spiritual one, he will not allow them to, to hijack any of them from you. Or to steal any of them from you. Amen. Amen. So, I move quickly to the second one. You can also... Those, those category of the people that sell. Now, we're in the category of people that sell. They sell it through what? Adultery and fornication. Adultery and what? Fornication. Adultery and what? Fornication. Now, for young people, it is called fornication. You'll be surprised that adults also lose birthright. Because there are some, 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 some have a lot. But by the time they get married, they, they are left with only a few. That only few, they still lose it after marriage. Because of carelessness. But I'm not going to the adult area. I want to speak to the youth today. So, they lose it through fornication. Fornication. I want us to see Genesis chapter 39 to see someone that guided is he guided the enemy wanted to steal it. Because when the enemy wants to steal your bad right, they push, you will think you are the only handsome person on the street. And if you are a lady, you will think you are the only beautiful lady on the, on, in town. Because they will be rushing you. They will be rushing you. The more glorious you are, the more you see lady, ladies trooping on your life on your road. They will they will even throw themselves at you when you don't want. Then you'll be, you'll be imagining, say, ah, you, ah, how did I have this love for ladies like this? You don't have love for ladies. You only, they are only pursuing your bad right. The enemy has said, because the, the enemy is terrified by the bad right of everyone that God has created. He's terrified. Because by the time you begin to manifest those things, you become a terror to him. Because he knows the more troubled people are. Listen to this very well. The devil knows that the more trouble people are on heart, the more they are confused to make a choice whether they want to serve God or not. Some people say, ah, that is not. It is the problem that always brings people to God. Yes, that is it. But when problems bring people to God, not every of those people that problem bring to God actually do the will of God. They only face the problem that brought them to God. Majority of the people that came to God through problem. A lot of them face their problem. They still keep in asking and asking and fighting battles and battles without facing God to see what, how they can do His will and fulfill the purpose for which we are, they, are, they were created. 
Genesis 39, 7 to 14. Then we read verses 21 to 23 too. The same for 39. And it came to pass. It came to pass. After these things. That, uh, yes. That his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph. That is Joseph now. We, we don't have enough time to read it from the beginning. Well, I would have taken you through when he, when he had a dream. He had a dream that he was going to be the star of the family. And he was going to be promoted and became very, become very big. So from there he was hated by his brother. From there he became a slave in Egypt. Now here he was in the house of a man called uh, uh, Potiphar in Egypt. He became slave in the house. And here the wife of Potiphar began to have long eyes. Just after a 17 year old boy. A married woman became interested in a 17 year old boy. And the people would say, oh, because the boy is very handsome. It was not. Even the woman do, that, that is involved in this act would not even ordinarily not know the reason why she was doing that. Because she was married. But because the bad right of Joseph was in contention. And therefore, there was need for the enemy to hijack that, to overthrow it. And for to overthrow it, they needed one way or the other to let it go. If you don't allow them to take it by being careful and you give your life to God, like Joseph did. Joseph was a child of God here, obeying God. He was taught about God by his father. So he wouldn't lose it by carelessness. He did not lose it by, by sin. Then the devil want to, I mean, he did not lose it by, by waywardness. Then the devil want to make him lose it by fornication. Then continue reading. She said, lie with me. Yes. But he refused and said to his master's wife, mm -hmm. look, my master does not know what is with me what is with me in the house mm -hmm. and he has committed all that he has to my hand mm -hmm. there is no one greater in this house than i nor has he kept back anything from me but you because you are his wife how then can i do this great wickedness and sin against god we jump to seven, seven. Uh, sorry uh, i mean um um eleven but it happened mm -hmm. after this time mm -hmm. when Joseph went into the house to do his work. When Joseph went into the house at another time to do his work in the room. And none of the men of the house was inside. Nobody was around. That she caught except him. Except only the Potiphar's wife. Yes. That she caught him by his garment saying. The Potiphar's wife grabbed him by his clothes and saying. Lie with me. Sleep with me. But he left his garment in her hand. He left his garment. He took off his garment from his neck and left the woman and ran away. And fled and ran outside. He fled outside. And so it was. And so it was. When she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and uh, fled outside, uh -huh. that she called the men of, the, of her house and spoke to them, saying, uh, uh -huh. See, he has brought in to us a Hebrew to mock us. He came in to me to, to lie with me, mm -hmm. and I cried with a loud voice. Amen. Let's stay there. You can read the whole story later if you have time. I want you to read verse 9 to me, only verse 9. You will hear what Joseph said. Joseph said something before he became very rough. He said something to the woman. Now let's see what he said. Yes? There is no one greater in this house than I. Yes. Nor has he kept back anything. He said, My me. master loved me so much. Apart from you, the wife, he gave everything in my charge. I have found favor in the sight of God. You see, when your bad rights are intact, you find favor. People love you, you are successful. You do things, they work out. You are looking for something, you get. You apply, it is given unto you. But the moment you begin to lose the bad right, those things are no longer easy for you anymore. You struggle to apply for anything. You lose things easily. You compete in something and, and you see that you are not winning it because of losing bad right. So Joseph, because he refused to lose his own and he knew that the bad rights were working for him and he told the woman, see, I can't do this. You are asking me to do your, I'm a slave, yeah, but your, your husband does not teach, treat me like a slave. He put everything in my custody. Apart from you, I am like a free person living like I was, it was like I'm living with my parents. I'm very free with him. How can I do this? Yes, continue. Nor has he kept back anything from me but yes. you. Uh -huh. Because you are his wife. Uh -huh. How then can I do this great wickedness? How can I do this great wickedness? And sin against God. And sin against God. You see that? Say, it is true you are offering yourself to me freely. But I cannot do that and lose my birthright. I cannot do what? I will not do this and lose my birthright. 
Every opportunity for you to sin in fornication is opportunity to lose your birthright or to steal your birthright from you. The more you go through it, the more you are losing. The more you go, the more you lose. Some people, some young children, they, don't, they are not left with anything anymore when you get, they get married. Then they now begin to struggle. When you see yourself going, when you see adults going from one prayer place to another, deliverance to deliverance, that is the process of recovering back all the bad right they were stolen. But if you can guide yourself as a young person and you say like Joseph, I cannot do this and sin against God and lose my bad right. It's very important to me. There is time for everything. This is a time for me to close my laps. But there will be a time for me to open it when I'm married. I have to be careful and keep myself until I am married. I cannot do this. It's a matter of decision and determination. That I refuse to lose my bad right by unlawful sexual relationship or intercourse. Those are the ways bad rights are stolen. One, one, another one, i move forward quickly. Uh, no, let me finish the story of Joseph before I move to the next one. Verses 21 and 23. Let's see 21 and 23. And also chapter 41, verse 40, 41 to 46. 21 to 23. Yes. But the Lord was with Joseph. Now, after Joseph was arrested and kept in prison because he the woman lied against, uh, against him, the woman told lie because he refused to sin. The woman said it, he wanted to rape me. Then he was jailed. But look at what happened to him in jail. Because the bad right was still intact with him. He refused to let it go. Yes. And showed him mercy. The, who showed him mercy? God. God showed him mercy even in jail. Yes. And he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. He gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed Joseph's hand all the, to all the prisoners. Look at that. He, he also became a captain in the, in the prison. He was favor outside the prison. Then he went inside the prison. He was what? He was also favored there. And he became captain over those that he met there. Yes? All the prison, whatever they did there, uh -huh. it was his doing. The uh -huh. keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority. Amen. Let's go to 41. Chapter 41, verses 41 to 46. 41 to 46. Yes? It says... Uh, and Pharaoh said to Joseph Pharaoh, now this time Joseph had interpreted some dreams And those abilities to interpret dreams They are also what? Bad rights given to Joseph So he was able to interpret dreams If he, was, if he had sold his bad right That ability to interpret dreams would, would have been taken away He would not be able to inter interpret any dream So the bad right was working for him As he was traveling through life he worked for him in the house of Potiphar. He worked for him inside prison. He worked for him also by interpreting dreams to some people in the prison. And he also worked for him. They said he got to a point. Pharaoh had a dream. Nobody could interpret it in the land. And, and Pharaoh said to Joseph, mm -hmm. See, I have set you over all the land of, of Egypt. Yes. Then Pharaoh took his, his signet ring yes. off his hand yes. and put it on Joseph's hand. He put the signature ring into Joseph's hand. That is a symbol of authority. Yes. And he clothed him in garments of fine linen. Yes. And put a gold chain around his neck. Yes. And he had made and he had him ride in the second chariot. Yes. Which he had which he had. Mm -hmm. And they cried. So in, out. in other words, in other words, for the sake of time, uh Joseph became a minister in Egypt. Then a dream his dream came to pass. His dream came to but it became because he refused at every stage to sell his birthright. He kept it until he became adult and mature. And that was the reason why the journey was smooth for him. He had opportunity at many stages to sell any of them. He had opportunity at many stages for them to be robbed away from him. Or for him to lose them carelessly. But he kept them until they became to, they began to, to work for him. So we move away from uh, 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 that area. We go to number three. Bad rights can also be lost through wrong marriage. Say to somebody beside you, through wrong marriage. Through wrong marriage. Some people kept their own. They kept it for long until they got married. But their decision to marry became very wrong. They did not seek God or did not follow the pattern set by God in, in regarding marriage. You see, as a child of God, that I'm talking to those who are born again now, you cannot 
And you should not marry a brother or sister that is not born again. Because they are the trap for stealing birthright. That is if you are born again. That some people are not born again before they got married. They have sold it their own anyway. But those who are born again that have been keeping theirs for long, if you have kept your birthright until the stage of marriage, then you now chose to marry wrong, you have equally lost your birthright. You do what? You have equally lost it. Let us see what happened quickly in the, book, uh, in the Bible again. Genesis 26, 34 to 35. Genesis 26, 34 to 35. Then, now, and I told you before, don't forget, that once you lose one birthright, you begin to do what? You begin to continue to lose the other. Once you lose one birthright, you begin to lose others at different stages. Different stages, until you get to know Jesus. Then it stopped. Then you begin to pray seriously to get them recovered back to you. Some recover the earth, but some never recover me until they die. I pray if at any chance that any battle has been taken from you, the Lord will recover them for you in your lifetime in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Genesis 26, 34 and 35. Then Esau was 40 years old. Esau was 40 years old. He took as wives Judith, the daughter of Barry. He took as what? Wives. Is it wife or wives? Wives. wives. You see that? Oh. He took wives, not just one. Wives. In other words, he married two unbelievers, two people that are not in the plan of God for him, and the parent was not even in agreement with that. Yes, Judith, the daughter of Barry, the uh-huh. Hittites, uh-huh. and Bezman, uh-huh. the daughter of Elon, the uh-huh. Hittites, uh-huh. and they were a grief of mind to Isaac and Rebecca. Uh-huh. That's it. You see, he married wrongly, and they were grief to his parents. So why would you do things like this? From the days of Abraham, after Abraham has encountered God in Genesis 12, that God called him, all the way to Isaac, then there was need for them to be careful in choosing who to marry. Because your choice of a marriage, whether husband or wife, determines whether God's purpose in your life will fulfill or not. And don't forget I told you that everyone is created to fulfill God's purpose. And the instrument to fulfill the purpose was born with you. So if you now marry wrongly, then you begin to struggle with fulfilling the purpose. You begin to do what? Struggle with fulfilling the purpose. Because the person you marry that is not born again may not be looking in the same direction with you. And therefore they will be walking opposite to whatever you want to do. They will not be traveling the same way with you. They will not have the same understanding with you. They are not heading to the same direction with you. But some people get saved by God. By crying to God in prayer, but it's a hard work before God will come and deliver that man or woman that you married as an unbeliever. Then the journey of life comes back to We will never be the same again, but at least it will be better than what you struggle with. So that is why you must marry right. Now, these are one of the reasons why Jacob was blessed, why the mother actually cooperated with, cooperated with Jacob to be blessed instead of, of Esau. You see, that was the main reason why the mother, it was done supernaturally by God. Because there was no way God would allow Esau to be blessed with that kind of life he started living. He saw the birthright. Now look at what, I will tell you what he said. He he said something actually when he came, when he came before his father. A very funny thing that he said. I I want us to see it in the, in chapter twenty. 28, 29 to 34. Chapter 28, Genesis 28, 29 to 34. Genesis 28, 29 to... Sorry, 26, Genesis 26, 29 to 34. It says, And that you will do us no harm. Genesis 26, yeah. 29 to 34. I, I, yes? That you will do us no harm. Since we have not touched you, and since we have done nothing to you but good, and have sent you away in peace, you are now the blessed of the Lord. So he made them a feast, and they ate go, and go to 30. Uh, So he made them a feast, and they ate and drank. Then they arose early in the morning and oh, swore. Oh, sorry, I, I'm, I'm reading from 27, and I asked you to read 26. 27 is what I'm reading. 27 from verse 30. Now it happened. As soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob. As soon as Isaac has finished, that, that's where I wanted to see. As soon as 
uh, Rebecca plotted and uh, made sure that the, the father Isaac blessed Jacob. And don't forget that it's according to God's plan. Because of the way Esau, that's supposed to be the head, sold the birthright, misbehaved. So he did not even realize who he was. He did not understand his identity. He didn't know the importance of being a leader or someone that will take over the mantle, the Abra- what I call Abrahamic mantle, that was passed to Isaac. It, it was a heavy covenant with promises that God gave to Abraham. Then Isaac inherited it. And there was someone that had to inherit the nest. But Esau did not see that. But Jacob saw that. You see that? Jacob had been blessed. And look at Esau came. Yes? Uh, 31. He also had made... No, sorry. No, back, back to 30. Now it happened as soon as Isaac had finished blessing yeah, Jacob. Yes. And Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father. Yes. Let's, let's move quickly. I, I still have few to cover. And time is going. And his father, 32. And his father Isaac said to him, yes. who are you? Now the father couldn't see clearly at that time anymore. He had to ask them by name before he would know who was around him. So when, when Esau also came with the, with the soup and the food he went to prepare for the father before the blessing. And he came and said, I am here, my, my father. The father Isaac said, who are you? Then see what he said. So he said, I am your son, your firstborn Esau. Can you see that? Can you see that? What did he call himself? Firstborn. What did he call himself? Firstborn. But is he firstborn anymore? No. But that's what he think. Because he was thinking what he did some a moment uh, years ago with it, between him and his brother was, was, was meaningless. He was thinking that he has no importance. Because I ate some food, then I said, you are my, uh, I'm no longer the senior, you are the senior. Does that make you my senior? He didn't know that they have spiritual consequences. It is true that you agree to take the food in place of your birthright in between you and your brother alone. But it was witnessed by God. And it became very important to God that he has sold his birthright to who? To Isaac. So he was still referring to himself, himself to who? I am your firstborn. I am what? Your firstborn. But was he firstborn anymore? No. no. That was the reason why Jacob took the birthright. Yes. Then Isaac trembled exceedingly and said, mm-hmm. "Who? Mm-hmm. Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to, and brought it to me? Mm-hmm. I ate all of it before you came, uh-huh. and I have blessed him, uh-huh. and indeed he shall be blessed." Uh-huh. You see, you say I have already blessed your brother Jacob, and indeed he shall be blessed. blessed. There's nothing can change the blessing. So I'm sorry. There's no other blessing for you. In other words, I am sorry. You are no longer the elder because i have told him that his elder brother will do what i mean his junior brother will do what will serve him as the elder because i didn't know that you were not the one so he has been blessed the power has changed hands because he started living don't forget he sold his bad tribe because of food he chose to marry two foreign uh, strangers unbe- from e- unbelieving family two not one so there's no way he could carry that load the law was a purpose. Don't, for, don't forget I told you they were created for a purpose. And for that reason, there was no way he can fit into that anymore. Because of the marriage, that he, because of the, the people that he married, there was no way he could carry that. And after you see, after shortly after this, Isaac had to call Jacob and talk to him. Say, since, the, since this is the way it is, I have already blessed you, and you are living better than your brother. So I think... The Abrahamic man too will follow you. Therefore, you must marry right. You must do what? That is in chapter 8, chapter 28, 28 you read from there. That Jacob, Isaac now advised his son, Jacob, say, you must marry right in such a way to place yourself in under the blessings and the promises of God. And you see later as he was traveling to, to the land of Aaron to actually get married there, he met God on the road. And God also started that conversation of the new covenant with, with him. So he discovered that God has chosen him to be the next person. And as you see, the story is very, very interesting. Now because Esau have seen that maybe because my brother is going to marry right, that's the reason why they don't like me and God does not want to use me. Then he went again to do what? To go and marry wrong again, the third wife. So he was falling into a lot of error. So marriage, this is what I have time to tell you about marriage. I need to move on. My time is running out. So when you marry wrong, you can no longer stay in the plans and purpose of God. When you marry wrong, 
it's impossible. Genesis 28, 8 to 9. Eight, yeah, 28 to 9. He said, And Esau saw that daughters of Canaan did not please his father, Isaac. So Esau went again to go and marry from Egypt with Ishmael, his, 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 his brother's, uh, 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 his father's brother. Amen. So he made several, continued to continue. He continued daily by making several more errors because the bad right was taken, was stolen. Now, another way is through food or our needs. Through your food or your needs, you lose your bad right unconsciously. Through food or your need, what you need. That was the first thing we saw in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, in chapter 3. You see, God, the first creatures of God, the first people God created, first man and the woman God created. You see what happened to them in chapter 3. They opened to Genesis chapter 3. In chapter 3, you see, they, they were living there. God created them with, with purpose and the instruments to actually fulfill into the purpose. Physical instrument and spiritual, they were, they were made with. But all of a sudden, they fell for what? For fruits that God said you should not eat. They fell for what? For fruits that God said. See Genesis chapter 3, from verse 1 to 6. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which, which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said to you that you shall not that you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Okay, I think at this time I will just be mentioning the passage, then I'll be moving on quickly for the sake of time. In Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1 to 6, you will see how men fell. And up to verse 14, you will see how God was displeased about what they have done. They, because of food, they destroyed God's plan for their life. And the devil was able to cunningly take their bad right from them by food, by eating. Now, did the devil get anything? Now, the Bible uh, uh, used snake or serpent in place of the devil there. Because the Bible called him the, the serpent of old. That is the, 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 the devil. Now, he came. Did he get anything from doing that? No. He just came to steal what? The bad right. He knew that they had a lot of right on earth. More than him, the devil. So he was jealous about that. And he wanted to take it by all costs. And he got it at all costs. And he made them the second class people before the Lord. By giving them, instructing them to eat what God has forbidden, forbidden them from, from eating. So for food and their needs, anything that you need but the loss from your eyes, the loss of the flesh, or the pride of life, things that you desire to be that God has, has, not, has not asked you to, 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 to get to, the food you decided to, to decide to eat that you are not being permitted to eat from, and the position you want to reach that God has not given unto you, and therefore you want to use your body, you want to use whatever God has given you to get. Some people will say you, you use what you have to get what you want. When you are the person that believes in that, you are just selling your glory. You are selling your birthright. If you are using what you have to get what you want, you are selling what? Your birthright. You are selling your birthright when you are behaving like that. Amen. I move quickly uh, to the next one. From Genesis chapter 3 to... You see, in the end, in the end, if you read towards the end, let's, let's see that where God, God removed them from their purpose. And they became, their plan and purpose changed after all. In, in that chapter 3, can you read verse 20, 22 to 23, 24 there, please? Then the Lord God said, Behold. The Lord said, Behold. The man has become like one of us. The man has become like one of us. To know good and evil. To know good and evil. And now lest he put us out, he put out his hand and take also the tree of life and eat. So that is saying that now it is clear that man has sold his bad right. You understand that? It is clear that what God meant here that it is clear that they have sold their bad right. Before they begin to misbehave further. Because once you sell your bad right, many other errors begin to set in. So let us remove them from here. Before they eat the fruit of, uh, of life, then they begin to live in sin and error. They will never die again. Then they did what? They got them, God got them out of the place of original plan. He got them what? Out of the place of original plan. Then they began to live alternative plan. They began to live what? Alternative. So when you sell your bad right, you go out of divine plan to live what? Alternative plan. Even when you are born again later. When you get born again later, you begin to live alternative plan. The divine plan will be changed. The only way to remain in divine plan is to do what? Is to discover your Savior on the days of your youth. And make sure you walk with Him. Another story I want to tell you wrongly from the people that 
Uh, also, when you have wrong friendship, wrong association, it makes you also lose your birthright. Right? If you have wrong friendship, your friends are wrong, you are hanging around people that are not born again. They are the best of your friends. They are your closest counsel. You speak to them, you chat with them, and you know that they are not born again. They speak to you. They put words into your mind. Corrupt words into your mind. And you hang around them daily. Some of them, you don't want to hurt them. You don't want to let them go. You just hang, hang on to them. And you are not telling them about Jesus. And you also, you are not, you are not sending them away from, from you. Then they, became your, they become your good friend. Then you can be also lose what? Lose your birth right from there. Something happened quickly to one of the children of uh, 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 King David. In the book of uh, Second Samuel, in Second Samuel thirteen, Second Samuel thirteen one to fourteen, something happened there to one of the sons of King King David. Uh, King David, Second Samuel chapter uh, thirteen one to let's take one to six first. Then you take the rest as I begin to speak. After this, Absalom the son of David had a lovely sister whose name was Tamar, and Am- Amnon the son of David loved her. Amnon was so distressed over his sister, Tamar, that he became sick, for she was a a virgin. And it was improper for Amnon to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimea, David's brother. Now Jonadab Jonadab was a a very crafty man. And he said to him, Why are you the king's son, becoming thinner day after, after day? Will you not tell me? Amnon said to him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. So Jonadab, Jonadab said to him, Lie down on your bed and pretend to be ill. Now, who, who gave him that, that idea? Jonadab, his friend. Who was Jonadab to him? His to have them? That was his friend. The Bible says he's his friend. His friend. Amen. Amen. So he gave him wrong words, wrong right. counsel, bad association, bad friendship. He was supposed to tell him if he was not polluted, he was supposed to tell him, This is your sister we are talking about. Then he was the one that plotted with him to rape the sister. Bad friendship, bad association. So there is nothing that is good that you can get from someone that is not born again. No good advice, no good counsel, no good idea that can come from a someone that is not born again. When they speak, they will speak from the source of their father, the devil. I'm sorry to say their father, the devil, because the, the Bible tells us that anyone that is not born again, they are what? They belong to the devil. Anyone that sin is of the devil. Is that not what the Bible says? Whoever sin is for the devil. So if I say they are of the father, they are father of the devil, it means they are living in sin. And when somebody is living in sin, they cannot and they must not be your closest friend. Because when you have to make decisions or you are seeking counsel, they will not give you any advice. So by this association, you lose your what? You lose your birthright. You look, well, what was the bad right of, uh, of, of, of this con- uh, son of David? You see, he was someone that was prepared. He was living separately. He was, living, he was having his own quarter as the son, the, 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 the first son of a king. So probably, if David was looking at him that if he is gone, this, this would have been the dense king. You see that? See, what you, you see, when you continue reading the story, you see how David felt when he heard the news that he was killed. When Absalom finally went to, pl- to plan and kill him. He was very sorrowful. David was sorrowful because he was having planned that if I want somebody to inherit me, it will be it will be Hamnon. Because he was he was already going around like a like a small a small king around the place. Everybody was seeing him like a, it will be a good replacement for David when David is gone. And he caught that dream and that bad right dot. He caught it short by just sleeping with the sister through the advice of a bad friend. Then he was killed. His dream was what? Shattered. And some, some people will say, the Lord has given his ass, take him. Glory be to God. Did God take Amnon? No. He didn't take him. He took himself. He did what? He took himself. Decision that he made took him. God didn't take him. He handed his life himself. By listening to the counsel of the... He had his own feeling, but if the friend was believer... Or someone that fear God, he would have said, "You can't do that, uh, Abdon. This is your, your what? Your sister. We are talking about. There are many other ladies around the whole place. Speak to your father; he will get one for you as a wife. But what did the friend say? You know that some people that live around rich people, they want to mislead them. You know, they just want them to, 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 to They don't want them to be offended. They want to be their friends. Tell them, giving them wrong counsels. 
so that you can stick around them as a, a friend of a king to be in the future. You see, and they cut the dream short and they removed ability for him to replace David as a king in the future. He died with his what? With his bad right. It was his bad right to inherit the kingdom. It was his bad right to remain the son of a king. But he threw everything away by the counsel of a wrong, a wrong friend. So when you have wrong friend and association, there are decisions you begin to make. Even though you think about them, there is nothing wrong in thinking that in thinking about sin. But what is wrong is continue to meditate in it and want to bring it to pass. But that is a sin. You can think about something now and you speak about to it about the friend. Say, we can, you know, we can actually make that happen in the evening. We just go to the town. We have a, a club there. We can just go to chill and dance and, and, and celebrate. And by doing that, you can fulfill that dream. So these are the reasons. It is friends to friends that help some people to start smoking cigarettes. Is that true or false? It's some friends that help some people to, be, to start smoking weed and to, be using, to, to start using drugs. It's some friends that tell people how important sexual immoralities are, fornication. They tell you, say, it's good. It's interesting. This is the way to go about this is the way to go. Then you try to. It's a friend that tell you how to speak to ladies as a young man. They will say, you, say, you don't have the boldness to speak. I can call that one now for you. Or a lady is a friend that will tell you, say, you, you have to show up. You have to associate yourself with good people. You need to go out. These are the activities of friends. And the, the government and the society call them peer pressure, isn't it? A lot of young people struggle with that. You want to do what your friends are doing. You don't want to be looked down on to say, I am not civilized. I, I, don't, know, I don't know things. I want to behave as like somebody that knows things. Then you begin to see yourself going wrong way and selling your bad right. This is what I have time to do to, to today because the faces of my people are no longer good towards me. But I, <laughs> Amen. I mean the coordinators. Glory to God. So I have to stop here. But the last one is you sell it also through... I, I've said that before. So, so number, I take them again. You sell it through refusal to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Okay, you also sell your bad right through fornication. Fornication, no matter how short the fornication is, whether it's only mouth to mouth or or, or hold to hold or hug to hug, you are fornicated. Or you sell it also through wrong marriage, you sell it through food, and you sell it through wrong friendships. So be careful. I'll leave you with that today. You must be careful as you are going through life. If you are a young man or woman, keep yourself. I know that a lot of people, a lot of young people face a lot of challenges these days. Men, both girls and boys, you go through a lot of things. This world is becoming corru- more corrupt day by day. You see ordinary billboards where they advertise things. You see the way they show naked people around. And, and a lot of things on the internet that you go through every day. Uh, on, the, on the social media, on the YouTube, that you, people see carelessly. You know, sometimes you don't even plan to see some things. And as you are flipping through, you begin to see some things that you didn't want to see. Those are the, the challenges you are facing. But I'm telling you that the same God that has, that, has, that, has, that has saved you or that has called you to salvation is able to give you power, ability to overcome those, those challenges. Amen. Amen. He's able to give you the grace. If you ask of him, he will give you the grace. You can still have virgins in this world again. When you are talking about virgins, people think it's only about ladies. Men, too, boys, you need to be a virgin. You need to keep yourself until you marry. I, I don't always direct my, my preaching of virginity to only ladies, including boys. Including boys, you must keep yourself until you marry. It's not only, my, virginity is not only about girls. It's about you, too. The only person you marry in life will be your person, a woman or man that you know ever in your life. That is the way you enjoy marriage. That's the way you, all your bad rights are protected and they begin to manifest in that marriage. As your glory, your testimony, your blessing, your talent, your sources in whatever you do. You just begin to show up. You see things, life is easier for you than your parents. Things are better for you than, than some of the things that your parents uh, experience if you can keep your bad right. It is not too late if you have lost anything among your bad rights. Today is the day of your turnaround. The law can still recover back the, 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 the bad right that has stolen, hijacked, robbed, or that you have loaned out to people. But the law will recover everything back to you today. And if you have not lost your own, you have been keeping yourself, the Lord will continue to help you and give you more grace 
to continue and you reach your goal successfully in Jesus name. Amen. Like I told you it's all about determination. It's all about what? Determination. determination. Say this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do and this is how I'm going to do it. I cannot do it alone but I need to hang on Jesus. I need to hold on to him to keep me that I may be able to keep my birth right. If you if God is not keeping you, if Christ is not keeping you, you cannot keep any back any birth right. You need to be hidden in the secret place of Most High under the sure. shadow of the Almighty for your birth right to be protected. And once you have found Christ, you are going to be protected. He is going to encourage you. He is going to empower you. He is going to give you the grace to go all the way to sources in Jesus' name. Not only that you'll be able to fulfill purpose here on earth, and you'll also be able to make it to His kingdom in heaven if you can keep your birth right intact you don't allow the enemy to rob you of them or to steal from you or for you to even sell them outrightly to to the enemies so please protect and guide yourself and remain in christ and submit everything to him every part of your body to him and he's able to to keep you in the name of jesus and i want you to say this prayer i don't know if there's any one of you that you have you have done one of these things that i've just listed you have sold your own on the, on the lap of Delilah like Samson. Samson sold his own. And it was, you know, I told you about Samson that he came to the world with the bad right. And he sold it at some point and he was defeated. Joseph refused to sell his own and he became victorious. If you have sold your own at any point on the lap of any Delilah, in any unlawful relationship with any men or boys or ladies, one way or the other, you more even with honor. I used to tell my children with honoring mouth, you can you can throw them away. You throw a bad right away with, with kissing somebody you are not entitled to kiss. You are not entitled legally to kiss because you are not married to them. You are given if you kiss, you are giving out glory. You hug, you are giving out glory, and you are, your bad right is being robbed of you. So you are going to pray today, and I want you to establish your prayer in the book of uh, uh, Isaiah chapter fifty-two verse three. Isaiah 52, verse 3. That's where we're going to use uh, to establish that prayer. Isaiah 52, that, um, 52. Yes, can you read it for me? Verse 3. For thus says the Lord. For thus says the Lord. You have sold yourselves for nothing. You have sold yourself for nothing because you didn't know. You didn't know what you were doing. You were just being careless. And therefore, you did not receive price for what you sold. If you were robbed. You see, Adam, were, Adam and Eve were robbed by the devil. They were robbed by the devil. But the, the, the case was that they did not apologize. Did you see how many people have read that story in the Bible before? Do you see Adam and Eve say, I'm sorry, God? Eh? Did you read that said I'm, we are sorry, God? They didn't sorry. They were not sorry. They were just pushing blames, and uh, because of uh, my wife, and because of the devil, and because of that was God listening to God is a God of fairness and justice. You see, He will listen to you whether you can know how to apologize. That was what He knew that they have they, they have sinned, but He still came to ask them. But instead of saying, "Lord, we we have sinned, please forgive us," then He will be able to help them. Maybe, maybe God would have taken another decision different from what he, 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 he made. Maybe he wouldn't have caused them the way he did. But because they did not ask for forgiveness. But today you are going to behave better than Adam and Eve. You are going to say, Lord, I know I have sold, I have borrowed, I have loaned out my birthright. By committing fornication, by kissing, by sleeping with somebody. Whatever way you have done your own, if, if you, have, you, have, you have given you, because of something, you just offer yourself. Say, I just want it. Please give it to me. Give it to me. And because of the person I ask you, okay, before I can give you, give me this. Give me your body or give me this before I can give you. And these parents, I know parents are not here today. I would have advised parents. You must train your children from when they were young. When they were young, when you see a child, they say, give me that. They refuse. Say, okay, if you give me that, I'll give you this. And they give. You must begin to train your children. Don't begin to give anything to people because you want to want something from them. 
you must do it. If you don't want to give it voluntarily, don't give it. Don't give it because they are proposing to do something for you. That is what some people grow up with then begin to give their body to. The thing is normal. Giving their body also to get what they want. That is not normal. That is not the ways of life. If you don't want to give something, don't give it. If you don't want to have something, don't have it. Don't consider selling yourself or selling your bat right because of opportunity. Don't do that. I, I had a story. There was a man, there was a coach that was reported recently in England here. He was, he was promising some people that he would take them to, uh, to, to, to academies. A, boy, a man having an affair with Kana, Sodo, so, Sodom affair with some boys. Because he was promising to take them to academy. And he would bring them to some places in some trips to go and do some competition. From there, he was having carnal knowledge of them in the hotels. He was jailed in England here. Not like, I think last year or two years ago. But the children have grown up before they, bring, they brought out the story. They are now grown. They didn't know that time. They were young. They did not know that they were selling their battery to this man when they were young. So now they are now playing better. They are now mature. They say, what this man was doing to us then was not right. What he was doing to us that time was not right. Although he took us to academy, but he did this to me. He did this to me. Then they now begin to report, uh, speaking out, and the man was arrested in old age, and he was jailed. So you are going to pray to God. Lord, I have sold myself next to nothing. Without my consent, I have sold my birthright to fornication, to stealing, to whatever things, whatever things you have done that is ungodly among all the things I have listed today. By selling your birthright with your body, Selling your bad right with food, selling your bad right with sexual intercourse, selling your bad right with kissing and touching or hugging uh, uh, illicitly, begin to ask God today, Forgive me, Lord Jesus. I want my bad right back. I want you to pray. I will not stop you on the two minutes. I want you to shout, Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God. Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God. I have sold my bad right next to nothing. I have sold my bad right next to nothing. And I know. You are the one that can buy them back for me today. And I know you are the one that can buy them back for me. And your word says in the book of Isaiah 52, verse 3. And your word says in the book of Isaiah 52, verse 3. Says the, Lord. says the Lord, because you have sold yourself without a price, because you have sold yourself for you money. shall be redeemed without money. You shall be redeemed without money. Buy my bad right back today. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Redeem my bad right. Redeem my bad right. In the name. Jesus, redeem my bad right. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, redeem my bad right. Redeem it, redeem it anywhere that I sold my bad right to. My power, my strength, my glory, my purpose, the reason for my living. Buy them back. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God. Forgive me, Lord, today. Forgive me, Lord, today. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. For selling my bad right. For selling my bad right. For being careless with my bad right. For being careless with my bad right. Restore back today. Restore back today. My focus. My focus. My power. My power. My strength. My strength. My determination. My determination. My glory. My glory. My purpose of living. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. My glory back to God without a price. Redeem, O oh Lord, my, my birthright today in the mighty name of Jesus. Redeem, O oh Lord, 